Hello, welcome back to Oracle DBA tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to see about types of locking. So, in the last video, we discussed about why and what is locking and why do you need a lock. And in this in this uh, in this short video, we are going to discuss about you know how this locks really implemented and what are different types of locks. So, essentially, there are two types of uh, you know lock uh, implement you know uh, strategies. That one thing that we are going to do you are going to called pessimistic locking and another one is optimistic locking so this is types of so theoretically there are two different types of locking and we are going to give you an example and from the example we are going to we're going to you know uh, we're going to basically build the concept of uh, both this locking so let's take an example uh, we have a table called product and in product table we have very simple two column one is name and second one is called amount so assume that this is our product table product table has two columns one is name and amount let's say I mean, in, in a name i have something called pencil and the amount is 500 let's say I have another column called paper uh, let's say there are 1000 amount of paper so this is our very simple table the simple table will contain two columns and two rows and like this let's say we are doing a transaction where we are going to read how many pencils we have and then you know basically let's say somebody comes to the to your so the, the, imagine this is the is inventory of a of a real shop and then somebody is coming and then asking okay give me 100 pencil so what he's going to do so in that case he is going to read select amount from product where name is equal to say pencil so using this SQL statement I'm going to get the amount of pencils that I have at that, at, that, at that moment let's say this is going to give me the amount the number of pencils to 500 then what I'm going to do since I'm going to sell 100, 100 pencils to that customer so I have the new amount that I have you say let's say this is called a new amount is equal to 500 minus 100 that is 400 okay so I, I have the new amount and now I am going and then updating update this product table and I am setting the amount is equal to the new amount 400 okay so if I am going to do that assume there are two scenarios like while while I am you know while this customer C1 comes and asks for 100 another customer C2 might have come and then asks for another 100 pencils right so if, I, if, I, if he has asked another 100 pencils so that means you know and then I you know I, I, I am I'm still I have not complete the transaction you know for C1 I'm still doing this transaction I'm about to update right now so before this action happens if another customer comes C2 and then let's say this customer C2 is asking for 500 pencils okay so if customer is asking for 500 pencils and then you know for for this you know the agent who is basically serving then he just uh, look at the database and say okay we have 500 pencils right because you know because he doesn't the, the second agent who is helping the customer to does not really know that something else is going on and let's say what he's going to do customer agent 2 he is going to basically get this 500 all this 500 pencils and give it to customer 2 and make it zero before the agent 1 who is helping customer 1 is trying to update so now let's say if so basically you know the customer c2's uh, order is placed and he you know customer c2 has already taken all the pencils 
but whenever this customer c1 is is, is is you know c1 transaction is going on then whenever he is going to do an update this update should check so now basically you know this, you know this this has has a problem right now so how to solve the problem to solve the problem you have two ways either whenever you start the transaction you lock you lock the transaction assuming that there will be a conflict is going to occur so therefore you lock it okay i, I don't worry about it no i just going to lock it if you lock this thing if if the customer you know agent one had lock about c1 then whenever customer 2 comes and he must just wait because he cannot because this 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 row is locked right now by customer 1 so in that case customer c2 might have wait that is called pessimistic locking in pessimistic locking the assumption here is that there will be a conflict that is going to happen let's say if customer 2 instead of asking pencil he is asking for paper that means he is going after the second row not the first row so in that case even if i lock this thing assuming that you just have only two users okay so you just lock you just create unnecessarily a you know blocking thing on this on this thing but however this thing happen on some other rows right so in that case that is probably not a good idea to lock at the first assuming that there is a conflict let's say in this product we have 1000 products then you see what is the probability of hitting one pencil uh, simultaneously it's maybe one by 100000 right so this is the probability maybe like you know somebody is going to hit th that thing right so instead of locking at the beginning what we can do we can lock here we can lock at this point so now we are going to write okay so when you are going to read do not do not worry about you know just 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 see them then when we are ready to to you know to take so basically this is when it's, it's basically saying right so what are going to do we are going to update that uh, you know update product and send uh, set the amount to 400 but what we are going to do we are going to where where your product is equal to pencil and importantly we are going to give another condition where amount is equal to the amount that is started when i start this thing so how, what you know when i start this transaction the amount was 500 okay so you update only if your amount is the amount that we start with and uh, that is going to save you the other problem now that now consider the scenario where customer c2 is going to request 500 pencil let's say customer c2 request 500 pencils so again customer c2 is going to read 500 and he deduct you know he took all of them and then he made it to zero so now so if if this is made it zero before this update happens then whenever this update is going to going to be done so this update is going to fail because the amount is number 500 amount is zero right now in that case what is going to happen is going to redo the thing again go on and select what is the amount right now because you are just because what happens you know this guy is do a select and then after that he doesn't do anything he just wait right he is still deciding whether he's going to buy or not in the meantime somebody else has come and already bought all the pencils so therefore what are you going to do this update is going to fail and then what you're going to do you go on and see it again do it again and if you see in this scenario we are locking at the at the very last moment and here the assumption here is that that conflict will not occur okay the assumption is that conflict will not occur so therefore this is called optimistic locking that means i am not i am not going to lock at the very beginning like a pessimistic way okay i'm going to lock at the very end when i'm going to write and if for whatever reason that i don't also guarantee that you know that that uh, you know that write statement is going to succeed because it may happen that somebody else has already uh, updated that row whatever you started okay and in that case if this update failed then i'm going to redo the things again and this is what is your this is called 
optimistic locking. Now, imagine like you, know, you must have aware about this. Uh, you know, um, you know, like you, know, you must have aware about uh, the website called Amazon.com or any e-commerce website. So let's try to see, like you know, what is really you know, what kind of what kind of locking mechanism is good for those things. Now let's say take about Amazon.com. So if you go to Amazon.com, you will see different types of products. Let's say this is product P1, this product P2, P3, and all this thing. So what happens? You know, first you just click on that. So whenever you click on that, it's going to do the system is going to select and then see like you know how many amount, how how much, uh, basically, uh, you know how much uh, quantity of that product is available. Let's say the quantity you know whenever you click that thing is hundred. Okay. Now let's say if Amazon.com is going to go for a pessimistic locking strategy, then what is going to happen is that we are going to block this row lock this row so you are locked this row and then so basically this you know this customer one so basically you know assuming that we have a pessimistic strategy here okay so whenever customer c1 goes there so c1 basically lock the product you know in the product table for this p1 row is completely locked by c1 now let's say another customer c2 he also goes and see okay you know Customer C2 also finds out that uh, okay, so there is a uh, you know product P1 and there are hundred things are still available because you know customer C1 has not not write anything, he has not not brought anything. And then because and then customer C2 can see like you know how many this thing because you know lock does not prevent you reading. Okay. Now let's say while customer C1 is still browsing, okay, for other products and all those things, he is not yet ready to buy. Customer C2 saw this thing and he likes it and he wants to buy. So he wants to buy means something, some update is going to go to uh, some update is going to happen in the product table. But because customer C1 is ho already holding the lock, assuming that customer C1 is going to buy, we are just lost a transaction that customer C2 could have buy. When customer C2 is going to wait now, customer C2 is going to wait for customer C1 if we are going for a pessimistic locking approach in Amazon.com or any website that does a lot of like you know, browse and then write. Okay, so in that case, what we're going to do, we, customer C2 probably wait, and then customer C2, like you know, if, if like, you know, if the wait time is so high, then maybe he is going to, you know, he or she is going to, you know, go away from the, uh, you know, you know, he may not may not decide to buy. That I can't wait so long to buy. That means Amazon.com is going to lose a transaction. Okay, so therefore, pessimistic locking is not a way to go in in this kind of site. What do you do? You do optimistic locking. So they do optimistic locking. In optimistic locking, what is going to happen is that, let's say customer C1 is going to read, okay, C read 100, customer C2 read 100, okay. And customer C2 is, you know, nobody is basically locking anything at this point. Whenever they are going to actually decide to buy, that is when they are going to update. And then that, you know, that process is very, you know, because right now they are browsing. Browsing can take a lot of time. But when you buy, buy just one click, that okay, so is, is, you are done. And when you paid the money, and then you got the, um, uh, you know, product. And then in the inventory, we are going to deduct at that time. So this is why, so this is a kind of a thing that people ask you, like, you know, in what kind of scenario optimistic locking is, is good. And... And remember, in optimistic locking, we might have to go back and redo the transaction if it is this thing, right? So therefore, for example, if you know pessimistic locking, otherwise, you know, pessimistic locking is 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 uh, more useful whenever you are going to have some kind of scenario where you know that okay, I'm going to do this transaction anyway. So in that case, go to pessimistic locking and then do it quickly, and then finish it. You know, there no more browsing. You know, the steps would be very quick, like select, update, and commit. Those things would be pretty quick. In that case, of, of, uh, pessimistic locking may be a good idea. That means you know for sure that we are going to update. You know, know for sure that conflict will occur. Then in that case, go for pessimistic locking so that you don't have to redo. So had you used optimistic locking, then you have to do redo these steps again and again.